So, hey young guys, welcome back to the Mars Spiro channel. As you can probably see above me, I've got plenty of guns and this video is going to be highlighting the uh, what guns I use, what guns I have and what I know about them, which is just about how much knowledge I've learnt over about three to four years of diving. It's a 900 Rob Allen Sparrow, and if you're wondering what this is, I'll cover this in the next video that you'll see, episode 2, which will be highlighting all my gear that I use, but it's not about the gear, it's about the gun today, so at the moment I'm rolling two 16mm rubbers, this red one is an Adreno um, USA Latex with a stand steel uh, wire bridle. The other one is a 16mm Rob Allen uh, band with just your standard Dyneema on it. I have a muzzle protector on the top. Um, this is just the stock standard Rob Allen shaft. I'm not sure what size it is. But just a bit of green shooting line that I've just got on there. The boys have rigged up for me when I was down there. And they also put a pigtail swivel on here. I've got a very interesting relationship with swivels. I used the traditional snap clip swivels for a long time until I pulled one straight trying to shoot a Trevally in Solomon Islands. So I transitioned off that, went straight to the Dyneema, which is the red line here. As you can see, my reel is very, very messy. I need to rewind it. But basically the, the gist of it is when you've got a bit of slack, you pull it forward over that and pretty much untwist it out and around. I've used these for a while, but you, so there's one wire pin that goes through the center there. I'm not sure if you can see that. So that wire pin, you pull to the side, get a bit of a gap, and you come up and you basically unspiral your shooting line from that. And they also got a swivel on there, just so it spins a bit freer. Um, righto, so that's pretty much my, the gun I use for, I, I built this gun, so I've um, designed this gun to mainly be used in around shore diving and for shooting dewfish um, or mulloway. And it's a small gun, but for a lot of the power in a small gun, it's just like the equivalent to a 12 gauge shotgun if you're comparing it to an actual physical gun because it's a very small package but it, pr it provides a lot, of, um, a lot of explosive energy in a small gun. So, pros and cons of the Rub Allen Sparrow. The pros of the gun is a very reliable gun. The internal trigger mechanism is mostly a mix of Kevlar and plastic, so it's a very hard plastic. And they're very, very basic to work on. Anyone can do it. You don't have to be, you don't have to have a master's degree to figure out how this gun works. So, and also another pro of the gun, the real mount, they're like pretty much when you buy it, it, they give you basically a skeleton and you can just keep adding and adding and adding, adding as you can see here. So you can add a float line, you can add a reel, you can add uh, another rubber, you can add so many different things to this gun. It's so, everything's just easy with the Royal Allen um, thing that I've found. So, the cons of this gun, this shark clip on the back, I don't really, I don't clip the float line to the back of my gun. Uh, just because when you're swimming through surf and the float line yanks your gun, it yanks it up, down, left, right. You don't want to be doing that when you've got a dive buddy. And it's also loud when it rattles across the reef when you're trying to stalk something. may not seem like too much, but when you're hunting reef species and they're a lot more cagey or they're a lot more flighty, that is a major pain in the butt sometimes. But other than that, the other con of this gun is when you reload in a, in a pinch, 
you got to reload it and make sure that both sides of the shooting line are on this side of the reel. But other than that, those are my only two knocks on this gun. My personal opinion is, first gun I ever bought, it's a great gun. I cannot be happier with it. it this gun's gone all the way over to two, so on. It's pretty much every, every spearing trip I go on, this gun comes with me. It's such a great versatile gun. You can use it in so many different ways. So, great gun. I would recommend this 100% to anyone who's just starting to get into spearfishing or um, just wants a little cave gun. 100% get one of these, put another rubber on it, you're away. So, the second gun that I have to show you guys today is the little flatty hunter. So cute, isn't it? <laughs> this is an undersea zap. It's called, apparently. Yeah, it's an undersea zap. So you guys might recognize this from the Lady Hunter video, which is where I got that cray that you probably saw in the intro. But this little gun is basically made for shooting flathead. Like it's, I've put praying ahead on it, but as you can see, it needs a bit of tender love and care. I haven't given it, unfortunately, but, um, this, I'm going to unscrew the head and do a couple of modifications to this gun. One thing I've noticed is the rubber they give you is very, very underpowered. So I've got, to, I've got to power that up a bit more. But this is basically the traditional, these guns have been around for oh, just years. There's a gun I'll show you guys in a minute. It's the same, this is the same gun as the one up there. And except the one up there is 20 odd years old, this one's four or five years old. Anyway, moving from the butt to the muzzle of the gun, it's a chest loading mechanism. So when you load it, you sit this, the traditional way that you do it with these guns is you load it with your chest. But the undersea guns, they actually make it so you load it from your leg. That's why it's got that slight, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but it's got that slight concave um, action to it. I think it's concave, is it? I can't remember. But anyway, instead of putting it on the chest where you traditionally load it from, you put it just sort of at the base of your hip and it contours to the base of your hip there. And as you guys uh, load a gun like this, I'm not, obviously not going to load it outside the water, but it's instead of on the chest action where you've got the hands facing down like that and pulling it in and crunching it in that way. With a leg load, it's more of a, you keep your hands down like that, like the same as you're gonna load a normal gun. And then it, you lift your leg up and pull the rubber down at the same time and it locks into your notch that way. But anyway, here's, uh, moving forward, you've got the safety here. I don't use a safety on my guns, I just find that you don't point it at anything or anyone that you don't want to eat for dinner. So that's right, don't point it at people. But anyway, moving forward, there's full stainless steel mech. Um, as you can see, I've lost the top of the cover plate for it, unfortunately, but I can just bend a new one up out of aluminium. Um, and then just basically a normal, a they tried to recontour the grips here a little bit. The only thing, my only knock on this gun is that this tag is, this end bit here is facing too, it's kicked up too much from my hand, so my ring finger and my pinky finger really want to crush themselves on it. And it kind of feels a little bit uncomfortable, but you're, basically you tar this gun is targeting for shooting straight down on top of the fish, or if you're going to shoot like a whiting or a mullet or something, like in really close. But that's what this is mainly used for, this gun. Um, moving up, as you can see, it's a very small gun. It's made for very shallow water environments, flathead, biting, all your shore diving, stuff like that. Um, but move forward, a 16 mil with a hard stainless steel bridle. Um, you've got this sliding spring action here. So the mechanism itself, actually, I forgot to brush over this, but the mechanism itself is a what's called a pressure mechanism. So the gun will not activate, you pull the trigger, the shaft will not move unless there is pressure to the shaft. There we go. 
shooting line, your little mongrel. Okay. So, as you can see, pressure mechanism won't work unless um, you have some weight behind the shaft that won't go anywhere. Unlike for the Rob Allens here, their, pre their mechanism is more of a modern day spring one. You pull the trigger, the line catch goes the other way, and the shaft is then free to move until reloaded. So, getting back to the spark, it's just this bit in the center here. This is a sliding spring. So, this gives you, it's a double wrapped um, gun, which means it's got double the amount of line for your shooting length, and the spring itself is moving between the shafts, so you got that much extra length. And also, too, another thing with these undersea guns is they have a threaded muzzle. So, you got to watch out if your fish is doing spirals underneath you and you've got it on a threaded muzzle, it can sometimes unthread the spearhead from your shaft. So I need to take this muzzle off and give, the, give these prongs a really good sharpener because it's like they've seen the salt water a little bit. But I need to, you'll see it, I did a uh, completely refurbished an undersea gun, uh, you'll see it coming up in a second and I'll just keep this gun out so I can show you the comparison to it. This, these mechanisms are funny, you got to put the safety on. That's a, a bit of a mongrel sometimes. And I just don't want to behave. There we go. And then, yep, yeah, just a simple double wrap. So what the double wrap means is it starts from the shaft, goes under the line load, comes up around the top of the muzzle again, and then comes back to the line catch and springs on there with the help from the bungee, which is just here. As you can see, that bungee stretch goes from there pretty much to the base of the gun. So they have a great bungee on them. I, I don't, uh, the pros of this gun is it's small and it can really just tuck in everywhere, anywhere, you know, you want to go for a quick spearfish and get some lighting, just some dinner, a little bit of lunch. It's great for that. Uh, my only cons on it, it's a bit underpowered, but that can be solved pretty easily and the mechanism takes a second to get used to. Right, uh, pros and cons about the undersea spark. So, pros of it, it's small, it can fit anywhere, it's great to have as a backup gun or as a short oven gun if you're going along the sand flats looking for flat air whiting. Those uh, type of uh, species that are just about everywhere. Um, and another pro of the gun is the head, it gives you a lot more versatile um, to choose what head if you want to switch between a pranger head or a power or a um, I think they call it a power head or the, the double floppers you'll see one in a second so that's a great uh, great thing they really um, gave you there and pretty much yeah so the cons of this gun is it makes me a little uneasy how the stainless steel bridle sits into the notch that kind of just, I don't know, it makes me a bit on edge when I'm when I'm spearing and I'm going through waves and stuff, I'm worried that the rubber is going to come flying off the actual shaft itself. Uh, another con of the gun is the spring can sometimes get caught up on this little notch here and that can be a serious pain sometimes and they don't give you another notch for another rubber, that kind of annoys me and the trigger mechanism takes a little bit to figure out but other than that great gun um, I would 100% recommend this to anyone who's got a lot of sand flats they're diving across a lot of sand flats in their area there's a lot of flathead whiting this gun would be perfect for that type of stuff if you're shooting if you're looking for octopus great gun for that it is small can fit in tight caves very very easy chops through the water like a beast all right, what do we got next? So you guys probably would not recognize this gun because it doesn't exist anywhere. This is one of one. I made this gun from scratch. Yes. Quick question, is that legal? Yes. Okay. It's legal, thank okay. you. 
talking and behind the camera. Just Kira. making sure <laughs> before you post that you've made it. Yeah. Gun. yeah. Everyone makes their own guns. Anyway. Um, so yeah, this is one of one. You cannot find this gun anywhere. This is one I made from scratch. It is a Blue Water 1200 Tasmanian Oak built gun. Tazzy Oak? Yeah, it is Tazzy Oak. Um, so, the way this gun works is when you pull the trigger, the shaft, the shooting line, which is all this here, that goes back to a float. This gun is made for tropical blue water hunting. So when you go out in a boat, you're shooting Spanish mackerel, that's what it's made for. That way you can hook this end up to a float and you can, when the gun shoots, the shaft is completely separate from the gun itself. So you can swim away with the gun and the shaft and this blue line here, and the blue line's also got a bungee on the end of it, they all go as one out to the fish. So, starting from, that even stands up by itself. I don't even know if I could do that. That's pretty, it looks like an art piece. Look at that. Righto, so, this is gonna be a bit harder because this thing weighs a ton. But, starting from back, going from the back to the front, I've got a Rob Allen mechanism here at the back that powers a, this is a Rob Allen shaft. Yeah, it is, this is a Rob Allen 1200 shaft. I've used a bit of constrictor cord for my shooting line, mainly because I didn't have any Dyneema on me at the time. And this gun's only gonna be pulled out once, a, once in a blue moon, as you can see here. I have not gone blue water and used this gun yet. I've tested it. The first time I tested it, it scared the hell out of me. I was doing my target testing, my float testing. I was a little bit positively buoyant, so I gotta re, I gotta take that into account. And when I pulled the trigger, I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna be timber. With timber guns, the main thing is they don't have a lot of recoil compared to the aluminium guns, but this one doesn't abide by those laws. So I pulled the trigger with one hand and the stock came flying past my face underwater and I was like, okay, I'm gonna need two hands on this from now. So, that's why it's such a beast and I haven't used it in the blue water yet. But basically, I just got a bit of a, pretty much a bit of um, Tazzy Oak from the local hardware store where I, where I live and the line catches under there. I've just cut that out. Down the center is a laminated bit of teak to kind of keep the gun straight from warping and bending over time. So I've got it, I cut it in half pretty much and then glued that in there, screwed it in there, did all that uh, join, joinery stuff. So a bit of teak that's laminated in the center. center. Got a routed out channel too for the rail, to, pretty much a routed out rail for it to sit on. This gun, you'll notice, does not have a closed muzzle. It's the only open muzzle gun that I'll have, which means there's nothing, there's nothing in the way from the shaft to the point to the, to the fish, your target, whatever it might be. So that's an open muzzle. As you can see, kind of, there's the rail there, and the shooting line itself actually holds the, the shaft flat to the gun. So I made it like that, and then, yeah, it's just, Pretty much just a normal spear gun. I'm running two uh, 16 mil USA latex rubbers on this. If I was gonna do this again, so the pros of this gun is it just looks beautiful. Like I hit it with a 400 grit sandpaper and then a spray can uh, finish. And as you can see, a couple of holes up and down the barrel for um, getting my buoyancy right. If it was too heavy in the back, too heavy in the front, I'd drill it out. Yeah, I'll put a bit of expander foam in there or I'll silicon a couple of sinkers in there to bring the nose down. But I've made it I've made it perfectly buoyant in fresh water. Not in summer, because I'm still trying to get the hang of it. I haven't had time to float test this for a while, so I've got to get back out there and float test this gun. So my cons on this gun is I don't really know. I haven't really used it. So I can't really tell you the guns. So the cons of it 
other than, yeah, the handles. Um, handle feels all right, you know. It's just a bit of, just a bit of dowel that was screwed down there. I know, we've got to see how it goes, and I'll tell you the pros and cons of it, but until then. But if I was going to do it again, I'll probably take a bit more meat out of the side so it's a bit lighter. Hey guys, sorry I had to cut the video up again. Um, you'll see this is going to be a recurring thing in my, um, in these episodes, but they're just going to be hours and hours long, and I don't really want to keep you guys for hours and hours. I'd love to, but I know, yeah, no one's really got that time, so I'm trying to cut them down to 15 to 20 minute sort of videos, so... I hope you like this editing style. If you want, to, if you like more of these videos, make sure you drop a like and a comment. Also, I'll be making a playlist of these videos, so make sure you go over there, have a look what is going on over there. But I'll see you guys in the next one.